Okay, let's have a look at it um, in sports science, how we actually use energy uh, and how we use the different food systems in our body and we apply it to hockey, our sport. <coughs> this just doesn't apply to hockey, but it actually applies to anybody who's overweight or has diabetes or heart disease. This can be of immense benefit to those as well. So first of all, let's just look at how you, what, what is energy and how you make it. If this is a cell in the body, you know, and you've got millions and millions and millions of cells, Inside every cell, in the mitochondria, there's a chemical called ATP. That's short for adenosine triphosphate. And that's energy. The more you make of it, the, the better you feel. The more the cells do their job properly. And how do you make it? Well, it's really simple. You breathe, you drink, and you eat. Hmm. And the cell gives off carbon dioxide, and it gives off water, and it gives off waste products. Now, the cell itself, how you make this, the cell itself doesn't know whether you're eating a McDonald's hamburger or a piece of fish or a piece of rice or dal or whatever. All it does is break it down into the components that it needs to produce this chemical. And this chemical powers, it's the engine of a cell, it powers the DNA of the cell to tell it what to do, whether it's an eye cell, a liver cell or a muscle cell, but that's what powers it. Now, these are really important because if you don't breathe, you die in four minutes. You know, if you don't drink, you probably last a week. But if you don't eat, you depends how fat you are. Now, food is it's a bit like a piece of wood when you're burning it. If it's a dry piece of wood, you'll get tons of light, tons of heat, and a little bit of waste. But if it's a wet piece, you will get a little bit of light, a little bit of weight, a little bit of waste, a lot of waste, and a little bit of light. But and that's what happens with food. If you eat the wrong foods, you generate a lot of waste and then you end up with disease and all those sorts of things. So, so that's, that's how we do it. Now we can measure this, and when we measure it, we can actually determine how efficient you are at producing energy. So let's have a look at the science behind um, the energy side of it. Now if you can imagine, just before I start, this little chemical only lasts 10 to 12 seconds. So it needs these things constantly to be produced, and for these reasons. Let's just imagine, You've got two tanks in your body. Let's call one a fat tank. And this fat tank is infinitely expandable, isn't it? <laughs> this other tank here, let's just call it a carbohydrate glucose tank. Now, carbohydrates are the same as glucose, they just convert, okay? Now, this one is set in size, and I'll go through that in a minute, and this one is infinitely expandable, as we know. And that goes back to the days when we were, we were cave people, basically. It's called, we would hunt and we would gather food, and we would we'd, we'd walk around for long distances. We may not eat every day, so we had to have a storage system, and this is his fat system. Suddenly a tiger turns up, and he decides that you're going to be a nice meal, you're nice and tender, and you're going to try and escape from him. And the point is, how are you going to escape? Well, we have in our body these things called muscles. And these muscles are full of glucose at 100% all the time. Now, how, what we have is this system to get us away from the tigers. Now, how long can you, how long can you run? If I put you on an athletics track and I said, you, I want you to run as hard and as fast as you can, how long will you last? 10, 12 seconds? And then you hit the brick wall, you just can't run. Well, that's what happens is, You've used up all the glucose in your muscles, and, and that's it. It has to be replaced. And what, when you're running, are you breathing? You're just, it's called an anaerobic process. Now, this tiger, if you haven't escaped from the tiger in 10 or 12 minutes, 10 seconds, you're his dinner. Now, we don't have tigers anymore. We have bills, husbands, wives, children, politics, cricket, hockey. We have all these things which are very stressful, and that's what a tiger does. It creates a stress situation, so you're in a state of getting away from the thing that's causing the stress. Okay? But the th trouble is, the wives and the husbands and the bills, they don't give up. <laughs> they continue on all the time, so they never give up. So how, how does this all work? Well, very simply, your liver can store somewhere between roughly about 60 and 90 grams a carbohydrate, okay? And that's the storage system that your body uses. When it 
when you eat more than that, when you put more carbohydrate, it actually overflows out of this tank, and I'll explain that in a minute. But the most important thing that you have to realise is there's one organ of your body that requires glucose continuously, and that's your brain. Okay. That's your brain. Now, the brain requires a constant supply of glucose. It cannot store it. So if you have excess glucose in your body, you become hyperglycemic, and you have less glucose that your body needs, you become hyper, hypoglycemic. So you need glucose constantly. The problem is, and this is what happens in sport, and it happens in, in life as well, is if you have excess glucose, the symptoms are, very clearly, tiredness, lethargy, fuzzy thinking, hand-eye coordination drops up up to 40%, you will lose two lines in an eyesight chart, anxiety are all symptoms of having excess glucose in your system. Now in sport, that's particularly important because if your hand-eye coordination drops off and your judgmental skills drop off, you're not performing at an optimal level. So it's really, really critical. Now what in turn happens then is when you have excess carbohydrate, now we use a machine called an indirect calorimeter. It's called an e-scan machine. So what it does is it tells us how efficient you are at producing energy, but it tells me where you are in this cycle, in this picture. So for our athletes, what we're looking at is that we want to be burning fat all the time. We are, we're burning glucose, obviously, as well, for our muscles, and but primarily, we don't want to be in a position where we're not thinking clearly, where, where our judgmental skills are poor. We want to be running optimally. So what typically happens is, when we have excess glucose, there is a chemical release called insulin. Now, it's a very, very powerful chemical. Very powerful. It is designed to get rid of the excess glucose in your blood. Because if you don't, you'll die. And if, you, and if this continues on for too long a period of time, you'll end up diabetic with heart disease, all those other diseases, cancer and all those types of things. So this, is, this was never designed to be released today like it has. We have an excess of, we have an epidemic in India of overweight people with heart disease. Same as in Australia, same as in the USA. And it is for this reason, and let me explain. This is caused by dietary means, excess carbohydrate. It's what causes it. And when excess, you eat excess carbohydrate, which is in excess of what your liver holds, insulin is released. But what happens is, the primary reason is to get rid of the blood glucose, but it has a secondary effect that most people don't realise. When that chemical is present, you cannot burn fat. So everything you eat gets stored in this tank which keeps growing. Very lies the problem on a general basis. Now, from our hockey point of view, it's very simple. What we try and do is we measure our athletes and we control the food they eat. Prior, two hours or three hours prior, we know exactly the type and mix of food that they need to eat. So this tank sits around about 101, 102% full. So that after they warm up, the tank's around about 99% full. So we no longer have this situation where we are thinking not clearly in our judgment skills. We're actually performing optimally for our body. And because we are not, we are partially aerobic, and partially anaerobic sport, when we're sprinting it's anaerobic and we're jogging and running it's aerobic, it's a, it's a, a good balance of performing optimally. When we talk about, just diversifying a little bit, we talk about the energy that comes out of the different systems, one gram of fat and one gram of glucose, one gram of fat produces 36 kilojoules of energy, one gram of glucose only produces 16. So you get more energy out of burning fat. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you make this ATP? It's very simple. The more oxygen you get into the cell tissue, three moles of oxygen produce three moles of ATP. So there's a direct relationship to both the amount of oxygen you can get in as to the amount of energy you make. So all of these things go to help our athletes produce an optimal performance, not just in terms of running and playing, but thinking as well because hockey is a thinking game as well. But on a lifestyle situation, you know, if you're worried about your weight, if you're worried about diabetes and heart disease, this can be an absolute godsend to you. It can make the biggest impact you've seen in your life. 
in a very, very short space of time. If we can change this within two or three days to burning fat, you'll feel better and you'll lose weight. And isn't that the name of the game? Thanks.